Hi everyone, happy new year. I think this is my first Etsy type tech tutorial video for the new year of 2023. So welcome and happy new year. If you've not met me before or come to my channel before, hi, my name is Brittany. I like to make tutorials about how to sell digital products on Etsy, mostly things like printable wall art, printable stationery, um, also how to sell your original like watercolor paintings in digital format to make passive income. I like to help people figure all that out and figure out how to do it because it's a new space, it's confusing, so I'm here to help you. And I also like to do other type of creative avenues on here, like I, I like to document a lot of my sewing projects lately, so if you like any of that stuff or if you find anything helpful in this video today, please be sure to like, comment, or subscribe wherever you can because it tells the YouTube algorithm that I'm doing a good job and putting good content on the internet and I want to keep getting that data back so I know what's working and what's not on my channel. Also, it is mandatory that you look at my cats. Oh my god, they're so cute! I do want to shout out a couple of people for donating to the channel. I have Jen, Brandon, Tanya, Karen, and Zynga. I'm probably butchering that name. I sincerely apologize. I'm American, so we're supposed to butcher names. But I got your donations. I wanted to shout you out on the channel. I sincerely appreciate it. It's going right back into the channel to help make things better in the future. And for today's video, what I'm going to talk about, one of the major hurdles that I've heard about and I've gotten plenty of comments on this is how do you get around the 20 megabyte, is it megabyte? I hope it's megabyte. I hope I don't sound like a dum dum. Uh, the size limitations for the digital files themselves. So let me show you real quick if you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've just made a quick dum dum listing just to show you what I'm talking about if you're not familiar. So this is the back end of how to create a listing on Etsy. Um, I just called it test for now just to show you what I'm talking about. So let's scroll to the bottom real quick for the important part. Down to the bottom here, it's asking for the digital files that you want to sell to your customer. So the digital files for your um, digital art or your scanned paintings, whatever it may be. So this is where you attach the file. I'm going to attach a file here. It's giving me an error. It's saying, please upload files that are under 20 megabytes. So today's video is going to be centered all around this problem. How do you get around it? You've done all the work trying to get your files set up in the perfect way, 300 DPI, all the size ratios, everything's good to go, and then you get this annoying error. So what do you do? Follow me on these next steps and I will show you what to do. So I am in GIMP right now. If you're not familiar with GIMP, G-I-M-P, GIMP is a software I like to promote on my channel. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. It's open source, which means completely free. A group of people got together and coded this software because they want people to have something like Photoshop for free. So um, it's basically a free Photoshop, if you will. I use GIMP on this channel and um, I would recommend you do so if you want to start selling digital products completely for free on Etsy. So let me go back a step and explain why I choose to sell a lot of very simple digital art pieces. Like this one right here is one of my best sellers and it's literally just line art. It's a sketched line on a white background. It's very, very plain. The reason I try to opt for very simple digital files to sell digital art pieces is because they're always, always under 20 megabytes and I don't have to run into that issue. The problem comes in when you're like, I've gotten comments from many people on my videos. They're saying, hey, I want to sell my original photographs, but photographs are massive files because there's so many colors going on. If we zoom in here, like we've got so many different colored pixels and it has to store the information somewhere. And that's why the files get so big. So if you're trying to sell like poster size photographs, you're going to have a huge file. So this one here, I've already set up to go as a two to three size ratio file. If you're confused what I mean by that, I will link in the top right of this video. Um, a separate video I made that goes into how to offer one art piece in several different sizes so your customer can print it at any size they like and put it in so many different frame sizes so they're not limited to just one frame size. I will link that video in the top right. Be sure to watch that if you're confused on what I mean by like aspect ratio and all that stuff. So I have my photograph that I want to sell. It's already set up in the two by three ratio and I've exported it and let me show you how large it is. Let's go look at it. I wish I could make this bigger for you guys, but I can't. So I'm actually surprised how small this is. This file is 27.3 megabytes. And as we know, that is larger than the 20 megabyte size. So what do we do? We have a couple different options here. The first one I'm going to show you is 
not my number one choice, but I will show it nonetheless because it's the easier choice. So let's go into that. So when you go to export your file, so you go to file, export as, um, we'll just call this piece photograph to export. And this is for JPEGs. When you export a JPEG on GIMP, this like second to last screen it will show you before it exports the photograph, there's gonna be a quality slider here at the top. One option you do have is to play with this slider. Now I wouldn't recommend going much lower than 90, but play with this slider, like put it down a couple notches and see how big it is. So let's just do that right now. Let's do it at 95. Let's export and let's see how big the file is. You can see just by notching it down five notches to 95, it's reduced the size by more than half. The file is now 12.8 megabytes. So it's a good size to go. And if we look at the details, we can check that everything is still good. My dimensions are still correct. My uh, DPI resolution is still at a minimum of 300. So it didn't change those important settings like the DPI, the resolution. It didn't change that. It just changed the size. Could I tell you what it's actually doing? No, but I've never, I've done this with a couple of my pieces before. I've never gotten any complaints about it. So the one on the left is the one that was exported with the quality slider all the way up to 100, and the one on the right is the one that was exported at 95. I don't see a difference at all, like literally at all. So if you're comfortable with that, knowing that it's literally the same uh, dimensions and DPI between the two, the only difference was that slider, try that. You can just try to play with the slider. If you don't want to go all the way down to 95, try one little increment. Try 99 and see what happens. Um, so this is one option you can do to reduce the size, like megabyte size, of your digital files. This is one option. I'm going to show you the other option I tend to go to if um, all five of my files are bigger than 20 megabytes and I don't want to deal with all this. I'm going to show you the second option. The second option you can go with is to share your files via Google Drive or Dropbox. I don't have Dropbox, so I couldn't tell you like step-by-step step how to do that, but I will show you step-by-step step how to do it with Google Drive. Um, it's free and Dropbox is not, at, at least I don't think so. So that's why I opt for Google Drive. So I've just created a Google account associated with my Etsy, just so it's all in one spot. It doesn't get messed with my personal stuff. So I will show you step-by-step step what I do. I've seen many other sellers do this on Etsy. This is not um, an uncommon thing I've seen before. People do this a lot. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call it um, Piece Photograph. Okay. So I'm gonna open that up. And this is where you would drop your five files. Um, and again, if you don't know what I mean by that, check out that video I mentioned before. This is where you would drop your five files. Remember, they're bigger than 20 mega megabytes. So you're gonna put them here instead of Etsy. So let's pretend I have all five done. I'm just gonna upload one just for the sake of demonstration, but you would put all five. So I've uploaded my picture. You would have all five, remember. And what you're gonna do at this point in this folder just so you stay organized, you're gonna create a new Google Doc. You're gonna call it piece photograph URL. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just calling it this. We're gonna go back to the main page of our Google Drive. And on this piece photograph folder, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to click share. Let's look at the settings we have here. What I'm going to do is right now, the general access setting is set to restricted. It says only people with access can open with the link. So let's check out the other options. The other option is anyone with the link. This may be controversial. I, I'm going to go with the second option, anyone with the link. And I'll tell you what I mean by that in a second. Let's just follow along for now. What this is saying right now is this is saying anyone that I give the link to can access the folder with those photographs. They can download the photographs, they can print the photographs, it's theirs to do with what they wish. Now compare that to the other option, the restricted option says only people with access. Now what that would mean, like let's say like in good luck world, let's say you have a listing that's selling like crazy, it went viral on TikTok or something. That means anybody that would want to purchase your listing, you would have to manually add their email like right here 
you would have to manually add their email for them to be granted access to that URL. That's a pain in the butt. So that's why I opt for the other option. Now, does that mean somebody can purchase my listing, get the URL and give it to all their friends and they can print the photographs out? It does, unfortunately. I just try to ignore that. I try to think the best of people that they're not gonna do that. They're gonna be respectful, but that is something you need to be aware of. So we're gonna go back to share. We're gonna change this to anyone with the link. And we are going to, let's just refresh the page just in case. I'm gonna right click again on that folder and I'm gonna click get link. This is the big URL I've been mentioning. This URL points to this folder that has those photographs in it for people to access. So what I'm gonna do is copy the link. I'm gonna paste that link. Now this link right here, let's just test it out. This link right here, if I navigate to that in my browser, look what I see. This would have those five photographs listed. People can download it, etc. I know somebody's gonna ask, like your customers do not have to have a Google account to be able to access this. They just need to be able to put the URL in any browser and they'll be good to go. So I'm also going to put a couple little lines of instructions in this document right here. Um, to access your um, wall art files, follow the link below then download your five um, JPEG files and send to a printer of your choice. Something like that. You could put it way more detailed than you want. I'm trying to keep this quick for you guys. And that way um, they'll know what to do with the link. So at this point, what you're gonna do, you're going to export this, what we're looking at here, this document. You're gonna export this as a PDF. Now here's where the magic comes in. So when you're making your Etsy listing now, instead of attaching the actual art files, all five of those art files, all you do is attach this document here. Okay, so we're back to our Etsy listing. Remember we had the problem before, the file was too big. So what you're gonna do is instead of attaching the large photographs, the large files themselves, the ones that were bigger than 20 megabytes and it wouldn't let you, what you're going to do instead is attach that document. So let's look at that PDF again. Let's just double check what's going on. Here it is. So when somebody goes to your listing, they purchase it, they're gonna be pointed to download this right here, what you're looking at. That's the only thing they're purchasing technically. They're purchasing a Word document. Then, then what will happen is they will see the instructions here to access your wall art files, go to this link. And that is how they'll be able to download those very large photographs. So those are the two options I would use to get around that problem of your art files being too big. Also keep in mind, that's why I like to keep my art kind of on the simpler side with a minimal color scheme, then you won't have to worry about this altogether. But I know some people want to sell photographs and like scanned images of their paintings. Those are massive files. So these are the two ways I would use to get around that. The first one is not my top option, but it's something you can play with. See if you see any differences in the quality. I never do. So sometimes I do use it, but this right here that we're looking at, the second option I showed you, that is my number one option I do. In fact, I do this for all of my original watercolors because they're just really large. So I just have Google Drive folders for that. So like I said, if you found anything useful in this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe wherever you can, and I will see you with the next video. Bye.